Hey, what's going on guys and welcome to another really awesome tutorial. In today's lesson I'm gonna be doing the car commercial and uh, as many of you guys probably have seen this old school footage of Audi. Uh, unfortunately I really don't know where the original source came from so I'm just gonna include the link in the description where you guys can download the files. It was posted on a reduser.net and I'm going to provide you exact the same link where I downloaded the, the footage. So I don't know the author, but thank you very much, whoever it is, for providing this amazing footage. Especially back in the days when there's no, uh, not so many material was available online to download. So thank you very much. And uh, today we're going to be turning this shot into this. And as you guys already know, if you've seen my previous tutorials, I'm showing exactly how to do the very same result. So you guys can go ahead and try at home um, because I'm providing download link. You can pretty much play with the same footage. So let's get started. And as usual, I have no idea what I'm doing right now. Um, even though I played with this footage way before, uh, even at the time, I, I had no idea how to color grade. I'm just going to start fresh uh, i just barely downloaded the file just opened it on davinci resolve i actually wanted to play a little bit with it uh before making a tutorial but i figured if it's going to be unscripted that way you guys can kind of learn a little bit more to see how i go about approaching uh footage okay so um let's see i'm gonna the first step i'm gonna do is to go on the camera raw and actually change it uh, change the color space to red lock film that way we're working in the log and as usual for red cameras you can actually see how really noisy red cameras are um, I'm not sure if it's something common or some models affected by that but in some cases you can literally see the sensor pattern so um, obviously we we'll want to get rid of that and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do it. And we're going to take appropriate steps to minimize that effect, okay? And as usual, uh, like in many of my previous tutorials, the first step I'm going to do is to actually reduce a little bit of noise. Because it is a car commercial, we always want to show a clean product. Typically, when you do uh, stuff like a product, car, uh, or, you know, clothing, you don't want to put crazy noise you don't want to put crazy film grain you don't want to make it look like film you want to make it look very clean because you're advertising the product so it's very important so we're gonna zoom in a little bit and we're gonna see this I mean it's very obviously grainy so I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna put NR standing for noise reduction and at this point I'm actually gonna bring scopes so you guys can follow okay and in the noise reduction let me see what i can get away with i don't want to use any kind of third party plugins like a neat video because i'm trying to orient my tutorials so pretty much all of you guys can follow along and repeat the very same steps so let's see i'm gonna do this time three and ten um and as you guys can see we sort of have a little kind of blobs of weird grain why it happens because uh sometimes uh, when there's not enough bit depth in the screen instead of showing a clean gradient of the color transition um, especially you can see that in a still photography when you have that weird bending in the skies basically it happens because the display cannot really show the real gradient between the tones and it's sort of kind of artifact it's showing blobs like this uh, in many cases in order to remove it for example like in still photography all you have to do add a little bit of noise or grain <clears throat> I'm sorry grain I should say not noise but in this case we actually want to remove it so let me crank up a little bit more of noise reduction and actually see if it's going to be possible using the built-in features in DaVinci Resolve to actually minimize some noise Okay, and that's, as you guys can see, pretty much once it starts going over two, we start getting those weird blobs. 
So I guess I'm just going to keep it at 2 in this case. Let's check it out again before and after. And tell you the truth, I think before noise reduction actually... Well, from the distance it looks better with the noise reduction, but in a close-up it's kind of weird blobs. Anyways, let's continue. Let's not take too much time with it. And the next node I'm going to create, I'm going to call this contrast. Okay, keep in mind that we're doing a very clean look. I'm not going to be doing any kind of crazy uh, stylized looks because it is a car commercial, assuming. So we want to show really clean product, okay? As we see um, on our RGB parade, our shadow is pretty elevated. So let's do a basic adjustment just like this, okay? Uh, let me increase slightly more highlights, probably closer to the midtone area, somewhere around here. Okay, and I probably just gonna leave it alone. Okay, I'm gonna put this on the back, and this is gonna be our master contrast. So I'm gonna create a new uh, new node. I'm sorry, and I'm gonna call this. We're gonna call this baby contrast. And in baby contrast, I'm just gonna do a little standard S curve. And right away, as I was making the S curve, you can see that all the artifacts in the shadows disappear okay so keep that in mind okay just like that all right let's check it out before and after huge huge difference let's do a full screen and check it out on a full screen before and after before and after okay that's uh we third of the way almost there so um, if you guys don't really know how to read waveform or RGB parade, you kind of can see all those crazy spikes over here. What do they mean? Well, I really suggest you, especially if you're a beginner, to install a false color plugin because it's free and pretty much there's no really excuse not to use it. It's by timepixels.com, okay? So give it a try. It's amazing to basically visually show exposure. So I'm going to close this and I'm going to place the false color at the very end, okay? And what we're going to do, I'm just going to play back the footage and I'm going to see pretty much what's going on with exposure. And as you guys can see, we have our uh, halo over here, sort of the same color, like 20. So that's pretty much most of the mid-tone in this particular moment is. So as we start increasing, as the light being turned on, we can see that majority of this picture is actually somewhere at the bottom of the midtones. And the only things that we have that kind of look hot is this particular spotlight, specular highlight, and the one on the roof. And everything else actually looks very, very good. So let me turn this off. Yeah, actually, I'm going to delete it just for the sake of performance, and we're going to go back. So, as we know, let's check it out before and after. Before and after. We removed a lot, a lot of noise um, so far. And the next step I'm going to do, I'm going to try to do color balancing if we need to. So, I'm just going to play a little bit with the, with the temperature and see if we can improve something or it's gonna make picture worse. In some cases, you can kind of tell off the bat, like by looking at this uh, video, I can tell that it's pretty much very spot on with the w white balance. But sometimes as a colorist, especially if you have sort of creative freedom, sometimes it's not gonna hurt just to play around with it and kind of see maybe, you know, a little bit off balance can actually increase the production value of the picture. So when you're playing with your look, like I'm doing right now because I really don't have a particular set look for my final delivery. I'm just playing around and trying to figure out what is going to be the best look for the job. So let's go to the temperature and I'm just going to increase it a little bit. Okay, and then I'm going to decrease it. Well, you know what? That is, looks actually pretty cool. Let's check it out before and after. I kind of really like that very cold look, actually. 
that it looks very nice so maybe I'm gonna dial it down by third let's see if just kind of a little let's do half point just like that so I'm gonna call this temperature okay so enough of playing games let's keep moving and I'm gonna create a parallel mixer now okay and this parallel mixer in my first note I'm gonna call this Luma and what I'm gonna do I'm actually gonna select all the brightest parts of the image and see if I can increase a little bit sort of like dodge and burn and I'm gonna do this by going to the qualifier and selecting the luminance you probably if you've been following my videos you guys probably uh, notice that I love using uh, this particular method because I think that what gives you a lot of control over your image so let me turn the highlight and I'm just gonna start selecting just like this I think like that is pretty fair selection and I'm just gonna feather it that way we're not gonna have any really rough edges in our selection because the worst thing you want is actually having a dancing noise in the car commercial let's say so that is our Luma and what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna increase a little bit of the specular highlight and you guys can see the effect of this Luma selection let me show you before and after we sort of added a contrast into the highlight area so let's zoom in let's see what we can do um, image looks pretty clean overall I really like so far the look of it let me see okay let me check it out before and after before and after let's play back the video and see if we can add anything else to sort of increase production value or we can pretty much call it a day and leave our color grading alone okay well I noticed one thing for example I noticed that the light is falling from the left side so probably my last note I'm gonna call it re lighting and I'm sort of gonna uh, add a little more dramatic effect for the light fall off and basically I'm gonna do the same thing I've done with the Luma but with a gradient mask so I'm gonna place my gradient mask right over here and let me turn on the highlights to kind of see where this thing is falling kind of just just like this maybe a little bit a little bit like that okay that looks good to my taste and I'm gonna do exactly the same step I'm just gonna turn on the highlight and I'm gonna select probably this time like this make it soft of course just like that and probably let's add a little bit clean white okay and this time instead of using the color wheel I'm actually gonna use curve so let's go back from the highlight and I'm gonna give it a slight slight spike just like this and just like that let's check it out before and after before and after just a tiny little bit but I think it's sort of emphasizing the overall look let's check it out okay the car turns on okay let's look in the full screen I'm gonna move the scopes around because I think we pretty much done with our color grading so let's just play it back and see how it looks like okay like that very nice okay let's see before and after before and after I think overall I'm pretty happy with the with this result the only thing I can probably add right now is to add a little bit of sharpening but depending on the software for example I'm not a big fan of adding sharpness in the DaVinci Resolve uh, there are better programs for for this kind of job especially I personally like adding uh, sharpening a filter pretty much in the color 
uh, I'm sorry, in the editing software. That way you sort of kind of put the final look before the final rendering that we have a little bit more control over there. So let me go over here. I'm going to call this note sharp and let me zoom in a little bit and actually keep in mind that when you have a noisy footage to begin with when you add sharpening you may sort of ruin the picture because it may increase actual noise but for the sake of tutorial let's try and see how it looks okay let's see just like that i think this is a little too much i'm gonna go into key and i'm just gonna dial exactly half so let's check it out before and after and I think this is gonna give a very nice little spike it's gonna give a little more pop into image absolutely and actually you know what else we can do we can highlight the wheels slightly a little bit more so I'm gonna create one more and I'm gonna call this wheel okay and I'm just gonna create a regular regular mask regular round window right over here okay let's sort of match it kind of like this like that a little not too much feathering because we don't want to affect the outside radius and what I'm gonna do is just give a little bit a little bit more light and a little bit more contrast to compensate for that okay so let's check it out how it looks before and after before and after we just added a little bit more pop like that okay so I think our picture is ready and let's play it and we're gonna see how it looks before and after let's check it out okay so this is before and this is after I think this looks really really good so I think we're finally done and thank you so much for watching uh, please subscribe and if you guys have any comments questions or anything like that leave a comment below thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon